Niho YouTube, what's going on? Zalan to China. I'm a foreigner who is living and working in Harbin for already five years now. And today I will tell you the 10 most important things you have to know when traveling to Harbin in winter. For sure, Harbin is also worth a trip in summer. But Harbin's most shining attraction, the big snow and ice world, takes place in winter between the end of December until the end of February. I got many, many, many questions from people who would like to travel to Harbin in winter. And so I decided to do this short Q&A guide for you and to reply to the most important questions people were ever asking me. So before we start, uh, let me give you a short overview of this 10 point Q&A. Number one, uh, we will talk about the question if you should take a private guided tour through the city in winter or if you can actually explore the city on your own. And also I will show you where the most important locations are and where the most important highlights are located. So you will be able to decide on your own if you can do this trip alone without any guided tour. Number two, I will show you what you have to know when taking a taxi in Harbin. There is many, many crucial points you should know. Number three, we will talk about the best ways and possibilities to travel and to go around in Harbin. Number four, for sure, we will talk about how cold Harbin really is in winter and what you should wear. wear. Trust me, this is important. Number five, I will give you a special tip if you like taking pictures in Harbin. This is very important. You don't want to screw up all your pictures when you get home. And number six, I will tell you what is, in my opinion, the best place or hotel to stay in Harbin and where uh, it is located. Number seven, I will give you some general advice about the internet, money and visa general things you have to know uh, when you are preparing your trip to Harbin. Number eight, you will learn about some other interesting places around Harbin that are definitely worth visiting. Number nine, I will show you some typical Harbin dishes you absolutely have to try. Wow, I'm getting hungry right now. Number 10, I have a secret tip for you in the very end of this video that hardly any tour guide mentions. Make sure you watch this video until the end. Enjoy the video and without further ado, we start with number one. As I already said, very often people are asking me questions about Harbin and actually the most frequent question I'm asked on Facebook is if you should book a guided tour when going to Harbin, when visiting the Big Snow and Ice Festival, or uh, if people are actually able to explore the city on their own. So concerning the question, if you took, if you should take a private tour through Harbin, uh, visiting the city maybe for three days or four days, my clear answer is no. First of all, there is taxis everywhere in Harbin and you can get on and off basically everywhere. On the streets, wherever you are, there are more than enough taxis. You just jump in, you get off wherever you want. I will tell you more about uh, taking taxis in Harbin later. First, let's have a look at the Harbin map so you can really um, basically understand how close the top five attractions in Harbin are actually located to each other. Look at this. This is the map of Harbin. Uh, you can see that Harbin is basically split into a northern part and a southern part by the river called Songhua. 
Tsunghuajiang is the name of the river. And the area north of the river is called Jiangbei, whereas the southern area of the river is called Jiangnan, which literally translated just means uh, north of the river and south of the river. The most famous attraction in Harbin, the Snow and Ice Festival, is located in Jiangbei, so north of the river, and it is actually located right next to the river, as you can see here. But there is two or three other very famous attractions you don't want to miss when you're around this area. Directly connected to the snow and ice world is the big ice sculpture park. It is spread around different areas, basically three areas, right next to the ice and snow world. And uh, some parts of Sun Island as well. And also a Jolin Park next to Central Street, uh, south of the river. So as you can see, those two very important locations are already very close to each other. So it shouldn't be a big problem to explore them on your own. When you are on a Sun Island and you feel um, like it's a little bit too cold <laughs> outside, what might definitely happen in Harbin, you can also visit the Harbin Polar Land, or watch some ice bears and stuff, some penguins and whatsoever. There is also the famous Harbin Art Gallery and the Heilongjiang Museum of Science and Technology uh, you can visit when it's getting too cold outside. I mean, the interesting thing is, when you have a look at the map now, is that those three locations are very close to each other. And um, very close to these main attractions in Harbin is another very famous place which definitely counts to the top five must-see places in Harbin which is the Siberian Tiger Park. The Siberian Tiger Park is located in the north of Sun Island. Uh, you can see there big Manchurian tigers. Uh, they are walking around in a natural reserve and you are able to drive through the whole natural reserve with a jeep. Um, some people don't like it because um, one of the main attractions in this Siberian Tiger Park is to feed living animals like chicken and stuff um, to the tigers. Um, if you like it, yeah, it's up to you to visit that. Um, and when you when you're next to this area of the um, Sun Island or um, the snow and ice festival you can go to the Siberian Tiger Park by taxi in like 15 minutes or so it's very very close and that was already basically the most interesting must-see places in the northern part of Harbin you can completely explore on your own. Now let's have a look at the southern part of Harbin, which is located in the south of the river. Um, the heart of Harbin is the central street called Zhongyan Dajie in Chinese, which you will definitely want to spend some time in doing some shopping, for example, having a coffee or just trying some typical Harbin dishes. I will tell you more about Harbin's most famous street later and especially about the very special dishes you should absolutely try here. Now very close to this famous Zhongyang Dajie Central Street is located the famous Saint Sophia Cathedral. And it is located so close that you can walk there with a within 10 minutes, right? So th there is absolutely no need to take any taxi or any guided tour um, when you want to see the church, for example, or the, the central street. You are already in the center of Harbin. 
you know so that also is no problem it is very close um, then also you can see the Jolin Park with the ice sculptures is very close to this part and apart from visiting Dzunghan Dajie and the Saint Sophia Cathedral I would recommend having a walk along the Songhua River uh, next to the uh, Sudalin Gungyan, next to the Stalin Park and as soon as you arrive at the um, big flood control monument right next to the river you will bump into the main central street Zhenghandajie So as soon as you see the big flood control monument, uh, you can go directly into Jungandaji. You really cannot miss it. It is very, very easy to find, very simple. Now the interesting thing is, and this is where it gets important, the interesting thing is that in winter you can cross the Songhua River on a husky sleigh or just by walking over it. And there is also a cable car taking you from one side of the river to the other. So you can go from uh, Zhongang Dajie or the riverside directly to Sun Island, uh, to the other side of the river and vice versa. In summer, you can also cross the river by boat. Very simple. You just buy the ticket, go over it, and that's it. And that was the main attractions in Harbin that you can explore completely alone without any guided tour needed. As I already said, there are taxis everywhere in Harbin, so it's no problem to get around. You just jump into one of them and off you go. And here is tip number two. How to take a cab in Harbin. What is crucial here? The most important thing uh, you have to know when taking a cab in Harbin is that almost none of the cab drivers in Harbin can speak or read English or any other language than Chinese. So always make sure that you have the place you want to go written in Chinese characters with you. I will do this quickly here for you and you can just take a picture or a screenshot as you want. For example, how do you say snow and ice festival in Chinese? Snow, snow and ice festival is Bing Xue Da Shi Jie. Bing Xue Da Shi Jie. Number two, Sun Island, Taiyang Dao. Taiyang Dao. Number three, the Siberian Tiger Park is the Dongbei Hulin Yuan. Dongbei Hulin Yuan. Then we have the number four, very important, the heart of Harbin, Central Street, Zhongyang Da Jie. Zhongyang Dajie and the number four, five is the Saint Sophia Church or Saint Sophia Cathedral Harbin Sheng Suo Fei Ya Da Jiao Tang Last but not least and never forget this very very important when taking a cab in Harbin always always and never forget this have the, the Chinese address and phone number, name card of the hotel you're living in with you. And also you should have the right street name uh, that should be displayed on the name card. Some cab drivers are kind of reluctant to help you out when you can't tell them exactly where you want to go. Many cab drivers insist on the exact address and place you want to go otherwise they won't take you. Thus another helpful word you should maybe know 
main entrance in Chinese is Zhongmer. Zhongmer. So you can say, I want to go to the Snow and Ice Festival main entrance. Bingxue Da Shi Jie Zhongmer. That's it. And the cab driver will know exactly where you want to go and he will take you there. Apart from that, every cab driver will know those, all of those famous places and take you there without any problems. There you don't have to worry. Um, once you get in the cab, make sure to tell the cab driver that he should run the meter. This is very important. How to say this? Please run the meter, the taxi meter. You say in Chinese, da biao, da biao, which means Please use the taxi meter and then point to the machine and then everything should be clear. Uh, during the main season in winter, some cab drivers might want to refuse to use the taxi meter though. Um, we all know they in winter they have more than enough passengers and some of them uh, come up with far too high prices. Um, it's the cab driver's best season to earn money and <laughs> you know it's bloody cold outside. Harbin is bloody cold in winter and the cab drivers they know that all of his passengers just want to get into a warm and cozy taxi. Nonetheless try to haggle a bit. Use a pen and paper or your cell phone to show how much you are willing to pay if they don't want to use the taxi meter. Prices between Central Street and the Snow and Ice Road should be no higher than 30 to 60 RMB, which equals around 5 to 8 US dollars, but never higher than 80 RMB, 10 US dollars. This is really the maximum you should pay, otherwise, it's a complete ripoff. I mean, we can all understand that cab drivers want to earn a little bit more, and also when it's the main season, right? It's no big deal. Um, you can decide on your own how much you want to spend, but in my personal opinion, two or three US dollars more or less won't matter in the end. Mm. Just try to keep friendly with them. Uh, try to keep friendly and polite to the cab driver or he might want to drive you around in circles using the taxi meter and charge you more in the end than you ever wanted. You can also take buses in Harbin for a very low price, around 3 RMB for each ride, which is less than half a US dollar. But the buses are rather complicated to use as bus stops are hard to find and sometimes hard to find and everything usually is written in Chinese. And I suppose it might be hard to figure out where you actually have to go. If you want to go by bus, I recommend showing people the name of the place you want to go, again in Chinese for sure. And if you're lucky, some of them will help you. I, in my opinion, Harbin people are very friendly. Uh, young Chinese people can even help you in English. This might be no problem. Uh, the bus lines to the Snow and Ice Festival are the number 13, 29, and 126. Uh, the ones that take you next to the Central Street, Zhongnan Dajie, are the number 4, 8, 23, 53, 114, 132, 201, and 206. Tip number three I want to give you here is about the main transportation hub. Uh, the main transportation hub, if you want to call it so, is located at Gunglu Daqiao. Gunglu Daqiao is the main traffic bridge, literally translated. And from this spot, um, all buses and taxis will basically take you anywhere you want to go. In case you get lost in Harbin somewhere, uh, try at least to make it to this big bridge as it mainly connects the northern part of Harbin to the southern part of Harbin. And um, you know, sometimes a cab 
from northern Harbin won't be willing to take you down to southern Harbin as the way is too far and then sometimes they have to go back empty you know and then they want to charge you more and it happens you know but uh, all the cab drivers really all the cab drivers go to Gunglu Daqiao to this main transportation hub where you can get just get off and take another cab or bus uh, there is buses going you can see the bus stop immediately at Gunglu Daqiao and um, yeah just one thing about the metro line in Harbin although there is one uh, metro line in Harbin it is currently only located in the southern part of Harbin and you can't really use it yet to get to the most famous spots in Harbin um, the network of the metro is currently being built and will um, be really opened uh, in 2020 or 2021 Tip number four for you, um, talking about the winter, prepare for an absolute freezing winter weather in Harbin. Harbin winter is super, super cold. The temperature at night sometimes reaches minus 40 degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit and minus 25 degrees Celsius or minus 13 degrees Fahrenheit during daytime. If you haven't, uh, uh, if, in case you haven't experienced uh, temperatures like this before, just let me give you an idea on how cold minus 30 degrees Celsius actually feel when you breathe in. The liquid in your nose freezes. When you breathe out again, it melts. So it's really bloody cold, I'm telling you. After a while outside, your face burns like hell and your eyelashes uh, start freezing start frosting and you might discover some frost on them and your beard as well if you have one so it's really insane you know everything is frosting and freezing and uh, trust me it's really like the more you wear the better dress like an onion you know this is what everyone will tell you here dress like an onion and when you get to warmer places you can always take something off Use some high quality t-shirts and sweaters, wear dark clothes as they absorb uh, the sunlight better, you will feel it. And also it has a sec uh, another advantage, you will be seen much much better by drivers on the road because the whole environment around you will be completely white and covered in snow. So let me tell you the absolute minimum requirements on clothes. Uh, during the Harbin winter. Let's start on the top. You need a very good winter cap. Um, the original Harbin ones are very very good. Uh, for example, I like to wear this one. Uh, they protect your head, they protect your ears and they protect your face at the same time isn't that great you can buy very very good winter caps here those harbin winter caps i like them a lot and uh, let me tell you with a regular winter cap mm -mm, sometimes it's not enough because the face and the ears are sometimes not protected you should use one of those i like them very much then you sure you need a scarf uh, t-shirts good sweater stuff like this but Take care that you use high quality gloves, winter gloves, and that you don't sweat too much in them. And make sure you can use them like all the time that you can handle maybe your phone, things like this very well with them. So make sure they are not too thick, make sure they are comfortable. Uh, you might want to need good waterproof ski trousers. And I highly suggest, depending on how cold it is, a rather thick long underwear in addition to your ski trousers um, your legs might be freezing you will need very very good winter boots um, in Harbin winter the first thing that gets cold here are your feet let me tell you this um, also there is ice everywhere and everything is slippery here. I, I, I think you will fall. I, I fell. I, I fell. I, I fall like uh, twice, 
uh, or three times every winter so make sure you have some kind of anti-slip sole or something like this on your boots you will benefit from this and um, also make sure you wear some high quality winter socks you don't sweat in uh, you always uh, might want to have a spare uh, pair of socks with you <laughs> I did a bit mis a big mistake here when I first went to the snow and ice festival in 2014 um, I had to leave unfortunately I had to leave after two hours or so because my feet were so so cold cold as ice literally and a bit wet so unfortunately I didn't bring any spare socks this is why I highly recommend to always have some spare socks with you um, yeah that was for the clothes um, um, the Harbin winter um, is a very dry winter the air is very very dry so I recommend uh, always carrying your favorite moisturizer for your lips and hands or so you know uh, it is very good your skin gets very very dry here in winter and uh, I also recommend to have a hot water bottle with you um, to keep things warm maybe you can put one in your jacket or any kind of electric heating device you can charge per USB and you can also buy this everywhere in Harbin so you don't have to bring this with you number five tip number five talking about the ice cold weather in Harbin uh, probably you want to take some very nice pictures to keep the best memory of this beautiful city and trust me there will be many 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 great occasions at the snow and ice festival in Harbin oh, wow this is impressive I'm telling you if you like taking pictures you will go crazy there but also let me tell you with low temperatures like the ones in Harbin during winter your batteries will die after a couple of minutes trust me it is so cold your batteries die very soon just make sure you always have enough spare batteries with you and don't just put them into your backpack I recommend putting the spare batteries in the inner pocket of your jacket to keep them warm same applies to your cell phone always keep it in the inner pocket of your winter jacket and have a power bank for recharging with you this is a very important advice don't forget this you can buy good power banks everywhere here in China you don't need to bring it don't worry Number six, a very important question that I'm being asked very, very often, where should I actually stay in Harbin? Well, let me tell you, this is uh, pretty simple. I highly recommend, number one, to book your hotel as early as possible. It is the main season here in Harbin and millions of tourists will visit here. In my opinion, you can stay in every hotel with minimum three stars or more to have a decent standard. Personally, I would recommend any hotel next to Central Street, Zungandaji, south, south of the river, uh, because it is the most vivid street in Harbin. And if you want to have a good, also Western dinner or a drink in the evening, Central Street is the number one place to relax and to meet other people. You will meet other foreigners there in bars, coffee shops and restaurants and also many interested local people that want to make friends with you. Also there are some shopping malls located in Central Street in case you need something. They also have Western products there, KFC, McDonald's, Burger King, Starbucks and an amazing coffee shop you don't want to miss secret tip for you check out my video here to have a look inside this beautiful harbin coffee shop in my opinion the best one you can find here i was looking for this for many many years and uh, i don't think many people know this it's very good i will also put the link to this coffee shop in the description below uh, one thing about Walmart you could see here on the map. Unfortunately, it is not there anymore. It closed this year 
Tip number seven about traveling in Harbin in winter. Some general stuff about internet, money, visa. As for every trip to China, you should prepare some things well in advance. Uh, if you want to access Google, YouTube, Facebook or Twitter as you do that in home at home. But now during your stay in China, you should install a so-called VPN on your phone or computer first. Um, if you want to know how to use a VPN, what VPN actually means and which one is the best I'm using for five years already, then check out this video here. You will find the link in the description below. This is what I highly recommend you. Um, before uh, you leave your country, I also suggest to take care of the VPN in advance and also to take care uh, to take uh, an okay amount of renminbi, so Chinese yen, yuan with you in cash. Um, once you arrive in Harbin, you can usually use your master or visa card to get money in renminbi at any ATM. There is a big ICBC bank uh, located in the entrance of Central Street where you can get where you can also ch also change money. But I rather recommend to take a rather big sum of money with you before you come here so you know nothing can get wrong in the end. Last but not least, as usual, you will need at least a tourist visa to be able to stay in Harbin, China. Number eight, um, a question I was also asked, um, which places, which other places around Harbin should you visit? For sure, there is the famous Yabuli ski resort. It is located southeast of Harbin and it will take you around three to four hours to get there by train or car. Um, the train is a good choice in my opinion, but um, maybe here in this case you might want to take a guided bus tour. Uh, this is my personal recommendation. Uh, and don't forget you can also go skiing now in the new Dawanda mall in Harbin. Uh, there is a big big indoor ski hall uh, they opened uh, this year 2018 in Harbin. Then, not to forget, there is the Snow Village. Um, I would only uh, recommend it if there is a lot of snow. Um, this is the time when it's really, really beautiful. Uh, I do not recommend going there by train, but also with a guided tour by bus. I will also show you on the map where it actually is located. Number one, number nine, very interesting. What should you absolutely eat and drink in Harbin? Or what can you eat and drink in Harbin? Harbin is actually very, very famous for its local cuisine. There is so, so many typical dishes here in Harbin that you won't be able to find in any any other parts of China. So make sure to try them all just to mention some of them. First is the famous Guobao Ro. Probably the dish Harbin is most famous for. Guobao Ro literally translated means pork packed meat and it is actually nothing else than deep fried pork in a succulent, sweet and sour, thick gravy. Wow. Then we have the Harbin Hong Chang, which is a cold dish. It is a very delicious red sausage with a lot of garlic inside and it has basically the taste of a Cabanossi, if you know this sausage. Me pers mm, personally, I prefer the so-called kids sausage, the kids uh, Harbin Hong Chang, which is called the Art Hong Hong Chang. It has a lot of less fat in it. And uh, then what I also want to recommend you is the Madiar Bingwar. 
If this is a Madiar ice cream popsicle, uh, you can get the best one in Central Street, Zhongang Dajie, and you can see so many people walking around with a popsicle in the hand. You definitely will see when the shop is near. Here, this is actually the most famous ice cream in Harbin. This is the Madiar. Madiar ice cream. Uh, it is very, very good. And when you are in Harbin, you should definitely try this Madiar ice cream. It is a typical Harbin ice cream. And there is always many, many people who want to eat it. Many people in Harbin like to drink beer. Uh, this is the typical beer from Harbin, the Harbin Pijo, and it is very, very special because the Harbin Brewery is the oldest and most traditional brewery in China, and it was founded in 1900 by the German citizen Jan Wroblewski. I'd say give it a try. I really like it very much. You also want to try the most sold beer in the world, which is called snow beer, in Chinese, which literally translated means a snowflake beer. Um, <laughs> could there be anything better to drink during winter? Then also there is some other dishes that will have some honorable mentions here. The Disancien, literally translated the three fresh ones, is a delicious vegan fried dish made of potatoes, eggplants and green pepper. The Tiegodun is a massive iron frying pan on an open fire with fat meat in it, slowly simmered, very succulent. Then we have the Shajuro, uh, which is a blood sausage, uh, which is served hot with sauerkraut, hot sauerkraut, mm, typical German taste. And as the northern region of China is so cold, you know, people like to eat many varieties of kraut because they can store it easily in winter. Last but not least, Dongbei people, uh, how the people are called in the northeast of China, like to eat jiaozi. Jiaozi are dumplings and they come with all sorts of fillings, fried or just steamed. Wow, beautiful. A word about the drinking water and never drink water from the tap. Make sure, also make sure you always have some hot tea uh, or hot water with you in a thermos flask. Then we have tip number 10 for you. The secret tip you won't be able to find in a regular tour guide. It is really a place that is rarely mentioned in a normal Harbin tour guide, but it is, in my opinion, the most traditional and the most beautiful place you can find in Harbin. The oldest part of Harbin, the cradle of Harbin, the real old village of Harbin and is called Lao Dawai. In this part of the city you can find at least more than 100 years old houses of Harbin. The oldest houses of Harbin and the oldest and most traditional Harbin dishes. Like for example this traditional Bauze restaurant in Harbin. They have some very, very typical dishes you won't find anywhere else in Harbin. Explore this area on your own, go around, take some interesting pictures, try some interesting traditional food and make sure not to only see the modern places. I will post you a link here where you can eat the oldest and most traditional um, Bauze in this very, very interesting area, Lao Dao Wai. Enough said, my friends. I hope you like this video about Harbin travel tips for winter. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also, just browse through the many, many videos I already made about this beautiful city during my five years stay here. Thank you very much for watching. 
enjoy your stay in Harbin. If you have any other questions, I'm more than happy to answer you in the comment section below or on Facebook. If you want to support me with a dollar, thank you very much. Check out my Patreon page, link is in the description below. Have a safe trip. See you next time. Bye bye. Zai Dian.